So hello everyone, this is Hannah. Um, Happy New Year to all. This is our second flight plan webinar, especially for customers. We're going to be running these every month throughout the year. So if there's any topics you'd like us to cover, uh, just email hannah at receptive.io or get in touch with your lovely customer success manager. Um, I've got, oh, sorry, Ali. I've got, Ali, <laughs> I've got Ali with me. Hi, everyone. Happy New Year. Um, so, as always, it's a nice and short webinar and we're going to look at a really practical aspect of receptive. Um, this month it's reporting. So you can think of reporting as the thing that makes all of your product feedback make sense. It's what you use to help you de-risk product decisions and build new features and improve your product in a way that has a really positive impact, not only on your customer base, but on your organisation as a whole too. So we'll get stuck straight in with the importance of strategy. Uh, then we'll get into the, the product in the test account and kind of walk through some use cases and best practices. If you have any questions, go ahead and start sending them in now and we'll get to them when we're talking about the relevant um, parts of reporting or strategy or whatever your question's about. Um, but it's great to get those now and we can work through them as it's relevant. So first off, just to frame things a bit, um, I know some people have a really strong strategy in place already and it's it's well communicated and some people need a bit of support in this area. So just quickly go over it. Um, the summary really is that you just need a plan. Um, you can't really use the reports in receptive well um, unless you have a plan in place. Um, it could be a week long, quarter long or even a rough plan for the whole year. Um, and it actually doesn't matter what your job role is, you've got to you know, make it your business to understand what the goals are for 2018, because that is going to affect um, the data that you'll use in your receptive account. Um, so when it comes to product feedback, here are a few good examples to run through of kind of why the strategy and goals are, are, are key. Um, so example one is your, these are real goals actually taken from, from some customers last year. So example one is you might want to increase sales to enterprise organizations. Second example of a goal is actually one of ours from last year, which was to improve the integrations we offer. Um, and a third example is uh, freemium. So some people find freemiums are a really great acquisition channel. Um, so they want to focus on, on what free users need. Um, so the most powerful part of receptive is it lets you slice and dice your product feedback to help you reach these goals that you've set. So going through back to the examples again, in the first case, you wouldn't want to look at all of your product feedback. You'd want to use the receptive reports to look at product feedback that's just come from enterprise customers. If, if that's the segment of the market you want to service, look at their feedback, look at what enterprise prospects are saying, <laughs> see what data you're getting out of your sales team. Example two, have a look at the feedback you've got tagged up with integrations. That's what we did last year. Um, we automatically uh, tag requests as they come in. So anything that was under the heading integration, our product team took that information, reached out to customers from there and, and, and built something really cool. And then the third one, um, freemium. If you're mixing up your product feedback and you're looking at information from paying customers and free customers first off you'll find their requests are very very different um, and and secondly you just get a completely different type of feedback really um, so in that case you'd want to look at freemium and, and free trial users only and we'll look a little bit more into the process and the in the practicalities of of this information in, in the next section but I think it's important to note here that, you know, in, in one road mapping meeting, you might look at three goals and, and look at three different reports. It's not for the whole year, you only look at enterprise requests. You might be balancing, you know, several different initiatives, and then you're also going to balance that against what your teams want. So keep that in mind as well. It's not just, it's not just one of these, and then you run with that forever. This is very flexible and it's going to change over time as long as you tie it into that strategy. So I guess the, the takeaway from, from that is that not, not all products is feedback is equal. And like Ali explained so nicely, um, the data you look at is going to change over time as your initiatives change um, and as your goals change as well. So before we get into products, these are the kind of two questions to ask yourself, keeping it nice and simple. 
um, think about what are your goals. If you don't know what they are, that's a huge red flag. You need to go away and, and, and find those out and have those conversations internally. Um, and then from there, you can, you can work out which, which reports you need. And that goal post looks like lots of English football <laughs> pages that you used to play on. It's terrible. A, a good way to, you know, get to the bottom of what your goals are is a, a good thing that, that I talk to a lot of customers about is, you know, do you have any high level roadmaps of where you're taking the product um, or where you're taking the company over the next, over the next year or the next quarter even? Um, what are some other good examples of documents that they can pull together to kind of get more of an insight into this? Um, you can't just go ask somebody what, um, you know, strategy reports or... Yeah, anything around that thing. Like end of year summaries for two, from 2017. Mm -hmm. All of those things can have clues into, into what the goals are and help you pinpoint which reports to use. So just to summarize, um, get, make sure you understand what the strategy is, otherwise the reports won't be very effective. Um, not all of the product feedback is equal. Um, and the reports and the segments um, that you're using in Receptive are going to change a lot over time. Perfect. Can we just double check that there's mm -hmm. no questions? How do we see? Um, just checking for any questions. Zoom, how do we do that? I think we're okay for now. Yeah, it must be. Hopefully, Zoom will tell us we're new, <laughs> yeah. to, we're new to Zoom. Well, this is our second the webinar on Zoom. The toolbar isn't showing up, so I'm not yeah. sure, but. Okay, hopefully we're not ignoring anyone. Yeah. We'll, we'll check again in, in a moment. Um, so now we've kind of set the scene, so to speak, we'll, we'll get stuck into the reporting. Um, there's two main types of report in Receptive. So we'll go through each in turn. There's the demand reports and there's customer reporting. So when it comes to demand reports, you use these to do three things. Build the right things for the right people, at the right time it's as simple as that and again that comes back to uh to strategy um so we're in the receptive dashboard now which should be familiar to you all hopefully um, you find reports uh in the left hand navigation and this is some like an area that that most people will have access to so i'll hop over into there so these are your demand reports. If you're using multiple products or multiple modules, um, the little filter at the top here lets you, is like a global filter and, and that will update all of your reports for you. So, so just bear that in mind. Um, so the first question we get asked a lot is, is what this indicate, this value is here. Um, so the value is a, a few things pop together. So if you, if you actually hover over any of the reports, it gives you a nice explanation. Um, so these are requests that deliver the most value um, to paying customers only. So churned users aren't included in this report um, and neither are um, free accounts. And we look at uh, the number of wants a request has had, the priority of it, and it's also weighted by a customer's uh, monthly value, the MRR. So it goes to say that in this smart list report, your bigger customers are going to have slightly more, um, slightly more kind of importance in them, if you like. So that's what that value metric is there. Um, just so you're aware, it's very, very different to the popular vote. So this popular vote report just shows the number of uh, kind of likes or votes that you've had for a request from your customers. Um, and the reason I'd encourage you to look at the smart list report is because the priority is, is folded in. Um, I've got actually an example of this in the uh, presentation just here. Um, so this is some real data we took out of our account. It's probably about a year old now, actually, to be fair. Um, but just to kind of hit this point home about why it's important to have a strategy and then slice and dice the data, I've got um, the most popular requests on the left-hand side. And then I've, to do a little comparison, we've got like um, the top prioritised requests from enterprise customers and prospects and from free trialers as well. And as you can see from the list, the things that are being requested by your enterprise customers are very, very different to what is the most popular. I'm just going to hop across and have a look at that uh, question. Where's my toolbar gone? Ah, I'm learning. <laughs> in app notifications. Somebody's very excited about in app notifications. <laughs> Thanks, Drew. Thank you. Cool. Um, so 
you can just get an, a, a good feel here. Like I said earlier, if your strategy is to build for enterprise customers, building things off the most popular list isn't probably going to help you out in this case. And as a very nice example, you can see the free trialers again are asking for very different things. They're a different type of customer. They have different pain points, different use cases. So um, that's my lovely, do you like my colourful spell? I love it. I love it. <laughs> Well, all this I technology can all day. <laughs> the other thing I always say is, you know, when comparing the popular vote report to the customer smart list is you're leaving out like time frame, not just priority, but the priorities pull in so many other elements like, um, you know, the age of the request uh, or when it was added there. So we in those priority sliders, we basically build in if, if it's a really old request, it'll have a lower priority on the user's list. Um, what else? Yeah, that's, yeah, that's perfect. So that's a bit more information about the popular vote. It's good to look at, but really the prioritised lists are where it's at uh, when it comes to decision making. Um, the other predefined reports we have are um, like churn customers. So these other reports don't include information from customers who haven't logged into your app for 30 days. Um, and again, that is because you can have a lot of stale data from, from users who have, who have left. And you can also split out based on value. And this is just done um, in quartiles. Again, if you hover over, um, that's explained as well. So you can easily see what to our high value customers, what's their top priority versus low value. Um, again, you'll find they're very different. Um, and then kind of upper level as well, you can look at internal requests because your teams always have great ideas too, and prospects. Um, so again, I'm going to keep going on and banging on about it. It's about your goals and strategy. If you're looking to close more deals, look at your prospect list. If you want to service low value, like smaller customers, SMEs, go see what, what they're after. Um, anything to add on predefined reports? Nope, Any questions? Cool. Um, so advanced. This can look a bit overwhelming at first, so I'm going to kind of walk you through it. Um, the advanced reports is where the receptive tags come into play. Um, so in the resources, I'll send out the document about tagging and about auto tagging as well. Oh, I'm just throwing my pen on the floor. Um, fact, so let me just grab that help doc. Mm -mm -mm. So we've got like the tagging overview, just to give you some examples. Um, like I said, I'll, I'll send this out. Um, here are some nice example requests. You can tag by product area, by project, workflow, like personas, there's loads of account level stuff. And you pick these out based on, on, your, on your goals, like I said before. Um, so the tagging in receptive is entirely flexible. If you want help knowing how to implement this in your specific setup, just get in touch with your CSM. It's really, really simple. It's minutes work, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, really easy. And one thing to keep in mind um, uh, that there, it's a, I think there's a little bit of misunderstanding around what the product, like multi-products actually is. So if you, if you have anything customer facing that you want your customers to tag for you, essentially, you can use multi-products to do that and just use modules. So in this example, we have like UX reporting email forms. Your customers can submit that and, and tag it up for you. So when your product team gets it, you can just segment it really easily. And that's, you know, back over here, that's at this top level. So this could be, this could be the different areas. Um, and that can be a really, really big win and it really helps efficiency for product teams if your customers are doing that for you. Cool. Um, so I'd encourage you, like I say, if you haven't got auto tagging set up in your account, get in touch with your CSM or look at the help doc resources we'll send out um, because that lets you do the really, really cool yep. stuff. Um, so as you can see in the advanced reports, this is where all the tags come in. Um, so if you uh, kind of segmented it down uh, by feature, like we talked about integrations area earlier, you can look at, um, you know, things that relate to your JIRA integration. Um, and all, well, anything you like, to be honest. Um, and then the count filters are, are really, really useful as well. Um, so on a lot of our enterprise, a lot of our enterprise customers will have CSMs assigned to particular product areas or particular accounts and using tags allows you to kind of view that data really, really easily as well. Um, 
anything else in advanced? Yeah, I think I think just to clarify that there's so there's product level which your customers will like that's customer facing, and then there's also auto tagging, and that can be anything from users to accounts to features. So if somebody submits a feature from a certain part of your product, that can be automatically tagged up through auto tagging, and that'll all be in the resources that Hannah sends out. Yep. Um, oh, actually, in case anyone's not seen it, there's this cheeky little chart view hidden uh, hidden over here. Um, so on request that you get in, you can dial um, the effort in. Um, and again, you can slice and dice this down to a particular area. So for example, I want to see all product feedback from my enterprise customers in Germany, if you wanted to get really specific. Um, this is where the development effort is mapped against that feature value that we talked about it earlier. Um, so obviously things up here, very, very valuable for that particular customer group things up here, not so much. So again, this can just help de-risk the decisions um, that you're making to you know, put things on your roadmap or not. Another thing you can do with this is if you've already decided what you know, five things you're gonna build next, this is gonna help you plan it out and, and figure out what to do first. Yeah, exactly. Cool, so that's kind of uh, the main kind of reporting section. I'm just gonna hop back into my lovely presentation. <laughs> so customer reports. Um, so customer reporting is the second type of report that you see in receptive. Um, this is really good for helping facilitate upsell, decrease churn, and just give your customers a really great experience because it lets you track every request the customer's ever given you really, really easily. Um, so I'll show you where those are. Um, so this part of the reporting is in the customer section just here. Um, to find an example. So here is the list of all your customers with the monthly value, when they were last in your app, whether they've churned or not, and the, the status. Just really quickly, the monthly value is what's pulled over from, from your product. Um, it's, it's automatically sent over. So if you don't have anything under monthly value, you can, you can work with the development team to get that set up or the product team, whoever's kind of handling receptive, your receptive account. Um, and you don't have to use our actual, so a lot of times our customers will put the MRR, send the MRR through, but if you're not comfortable having that data there, then you can send through um, like t-shirt sizes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my Would favorite like t-shirt. <laughs> um, so, you know, small, medium, large. So you can segment that data without having all those, all those values in there. Um, but that can be really, really helpful on your reports. And like Ali said, that's all done through the integration. And even if you don't want to give customers access to receptive or it's just uh, if you're just using receptive internally you can still set that integration up keep it hidden from customers but pull this really cool data across yeah that's crucial so this is one of our pretend customers Thompson Ebert. Thompson's catchy product name or company name <laughs> oh dear. must be attorneys <laughs> um, so for every customer account in receptive you can see as a whole so this this customer might have a hundred users and this view shows you all of the requests that that company has made the priority of those requests and exactly where they're up to um, and you can also see what you've released for that account as well so if you were coming around to renewal time or if you just want to do a nice check-in through the customer success team you know go and see what you've released for these uh, these accounts make sure they know about them um, and you can also kind of have a look and you know, see where things are up to. Um, so we'll run a couple of scenarios through. That first one, like I said, is you might have a renewal coming up. Um, it might be that these couple of features that are kind of top priority for this account, they might be paid features that you're adding to your product. So it's a really great opportunity to get in touch and see if they'd like to go ahead and, and kind of add them to the package. Um, you can also, as a second kind of scenario to, to, to think through, if you're in customer success or support and you need to um, pick up the phone to someone, you can go and find them as a user. And again, you've got all the information you need on hand straight away. There's no digging through emails about trying to work out what they've asked for. There's no panicking and going mm -hmm. through support mm -hmm. tickets or anything like that. It's, it's all here. You can see everything they've requested, the status, how important it is to them, everything you've released for them it just keeps a really nice track of, of all of that information. Um, have I missed anything? Nope, that's perfect. Um, 
Oh, and scenario three, we threw this in last minute because we've actually done a feature release today that we've not shouted about too much other than through our engagement email. Um, but another scenario uh, is that the product team might be interested in contacting a particular group of customers about um, something they're, they're going to start building. Um, so we've got this new send email stuff. Look out for the marketing announcements because it's going to be it's going to be really cool. Um, but basically, as a product team member, you can hit send email and you could contact all the users in that account. Um, so that's really useful for if you're building a, a customer advisory board, if you're releasing a feature that's specifically uh, for them as well. It's it's pretty cool. So kind of the main bits on the customer reports. Then, yep. Perfect. Don't forget to send through your questions if you have any. So, hopping back. Um, do you know what this is about? Oh, right. Apart from wizards. <laughs> I had to guess. <laughs> you did have to guess. It's a bit embarrassing. Um, so, that's the kind of rundown on the reports. The other thing we'd like to mention is workflow. So, for those reports to be effective, you've got to have good data coming in. One of the ways you can make sure the data is really useful is to keep your customers and your teams engaged. Um, the last webinar we did, the last flight plan one was all about customer engagement. There's loads of stuff you can do. One of them is actually just using receptive because when you're using receptive, you're communicating progress back out mm -hmm. all of the time. Um, the engagement email, things like that. So that's the first thing. Um, and then the second kind of important workflow point, and I think one of the misconceptions we get is how uh, long it should take you to triage new bits of feedback and requests that you get in. We've actually got this whole process that's like, the, what do you call it, the one minute? The one, the one minute, minute triage. The one minute triage, I love it. Um, so the next webinar is actually gonna be all about that, about getting a product feedback policy in place, so expectations are set about how you handle these requests. And then secondly, just the workflow, because mm -hmm. You can actually leave receptive sat running for for months and just be using the reports doing app pretty much nothing exactly. in the product team um so we're trying to automate a lot of that as possible and you know we'll really focus down on that that next time um oh yeah do you want to mention your launch pad i was gonna series? say if you do have questions about how to actually use the reports the you know at a practical level like what do you do when you sit down with your product team and which reports do you, like once you've once you've gone through this webinar you figure out which reports you're going to look at how do you what do you actually do the launchpad series is really really in depth and goes into all of the things you need to know um what at a high level what we recommend is you know you do your quick triage so there's two steps you do your quick triage and the second step is to have those road mapping meetings so you know just just kind of fit in the receptive reports into your current road mapping process. So whether you do that weekly or monthly, just pull the receptive reports into those meetings and go through, you know, the top five. If you have three reports that you need to look at, go through the top five with your product team. You don't need to be going through all of your new items with your whole product team and all of your stakeholders. Um, and so the launch pad explains a lot of the theory behind that. We don't have time today. It would be It'd be way too long of a you'll be of a quick you'll customer be asleep, webinar yeah <laughs> it won't be a quick customer but webinar, the cool thing about the launchpad series is it's really quick it's just 10 short emails so um you can just sign up for that and it's not going to take hours of your time you can just mm -hmm. get a little email every day to kind of work you through the whole the whole process and, and yeah. our best practices brilliant um so just summarize that section and check your workflow get on that launchpad email series if you're not already i know a lot of customers are um, but it, you know, there's, there's a lot of older customers signed up who, who might not have seen that. Yeah. Um, be clear on what you're using reports for and then ensure your internal teams know about custom reports, especially if you're in um, kind of customer success and support, they're very useful for those job roles. Um, and then just to wrap up, um, we've been doing these like, what well, is 2018? So I guess still <laughs> a peek at, at what we've been up to. So like I said, there's the email functionality that's, that's just gone out so you can email people who are you can email sets of requests uh, to people that you specifically want feedback on you can email like customer groups you can announce beta releases you can do all sorts my favorite my favorite use oh, case is i think you thought of it hannah so well, if you well, have like 10 requests that you know again like i said earlier if you have 10 things that you know um you're going to build eventually but you're just not sure what the top priorities are from that group 
you can send that list of 10 now to all of your customers and say, go vote on this, prioritize, update your priorities. We're about to sit down and have a road mapping meeting and you're sure to have tons of engagement in your account. So you're working from really, really fresh data. And we'll be doing that for receptive soon. And we'll be doing that for receptive soon, exactly. <laughs> and we just launched that today. So go check it out. It's gonna be on your, from your browse tab. You can select a, a list of features there. From the request page, you can email anybody who's interested in the feature. And then also from the account page like Hannah showed us. Cool. Um, and one of the things we're looking at at the moment is a lot more around analytics. So being able to do things like map customer requests and uh, internal requests like on one graph will be really helpful. Um, allowing you to track trends over time. So trend analysis, that sort of thing. Um, and then we've started mocking up this kind of strategy dash dashboard because strategy very much, um, you can use the tags for strategy, but it, it's not as embedded and receptive as it will be. Um, so we're looking at automatically recognizing which requests align to um, various initiatives you have in, in your organization and reporting all of this uh, back up the chain as well. Um, so that's kind of kind of coming soon. Oh yes, we've got a question. Oh my gosh, if I ever learn how to use Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Drew. Brilliant. Um, oh, go away message. Thank you. Um, so don't worry. I know this is a lot to go through. Um, I've put a little spreadsheet, not, no, it's not a spreadsheet. It wasn't a spreadsheet. I've put a little Google oh, yeah. doc together, which will show in resources with this recording. It's got the Launchpad series. It's got a little um, series and white paper about product strategy as well, if you need any help in that area. Um, there's a blog post slagging off voting for features because I was very angry one day. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a, a link to show you more about the flexible emailing as well. Um, so thank you very much. Like I said, next one's about the product feedback policy and the workflow stuff in depth. Um, so hopefully you can, you can join us next time. Definitely. Cool. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye.